Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we start off with the papers and we have Ezekiel Nyaito who joins the conversation. Ezekiel, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the punch. PDP crisis is what's making it uh, on the punch this morning. It takes the bold caption. Agreed NWC members protest exclusion from presidential campaigns. And that's what's boldly written. Underneath, National Women Leader writes uh, a protest letter. Vice Chairman Chief Ten or Chief Tains lament. Uh, that would be, uh, you know, a lot for the PDP now. There's a deliberate attempt to sideline sadness. Claims Bode George. Wike or Tom Mackinday, orders not bigger than party, says pro IU NWC member. I mean, what we think that, you know, the, the PDP should be responding to what transpired, uh, you know, or what's been going on with WK, uh, probably a suspension or something, but no, that's not the case. Hashtag NSAS, states fail to compensate victims and please warn protesters. <laughs> so funny. Federal government records over five trillion naira deficit in eight months. And telecos fume as federal government orders tariff hike reversal. Nigerian student dependent contribute 1.9 billion pounds to United Kingdom. That's according to the report. Uh, you also find flood 4,885 Ogun houses submerged, and federal government uh, absolves Cameroon. Uh, this is really saddening, really. I'm not sure you want to be in that situation, but, you know, hats and prayers uh, with uh, those who've lost their lives, properties. Nemo trains core members in disaster management. Ikiti speaker dies of cardiac arrest. Uh, government mourns. Alaba market traders' hoodlums clash. One feared killed. And uh, you have the Lagos Ibadan Express nightmare persists. Motorists demand alternative routes. These are some of the headlines you find this morning on the punch newspaper and over to the nation uh, the big one there how we will fund how we will fund a 10.78 trillion naira budget deficit by minister should be interesting uh, to make an interesting for an interesting read to know how they intend to fund that uh, the rider to that 7.04 trillion naira expected as domestic loans 1.7 trillion naira from foreign sources uh, 1.77 trillion naira from multilateral uh, loans um and the uh, nation has put out, uh, given the breakdown of the sectoral votes there, you can check the front page for your, uh, for more information. Buhari heads APC Presidential Campaign Council. Uh, it's full list on pages uh, 28 and 29 of the nation newspaper. Nigeria loses 9,000 doctors to UK, US and Canada in two years. Uh, Ikiti Speaker dies at 66. Reps Committee, OK, sale of Polaris Bank. President signs startup bills. Got some uh, a pump uh, with the announcement of that by the presidency Twitter handle uh, yesterday. IPOB, federal government appeals judgment freeing Kanu. Okay, yeah, pandemonium as Alaba international market traders protest extortion uh, by RTEAN. The paper has already uh, fingered those who thinks are the ones they're protesting against. Um, Fashola explains Lagos Ibarra Expressway delay, second Niger Bridge ready. Uh, Kwara government, ex-governor ex Ahmed Clash over collapsed 3.7 billion naira on the past bridge. I'm sure uh, you know the, this also has to do with the ongoing flooding as well in the state. Those are some of the headlines you can find in the, in the nation this morning. Let we turn our attention to the Daily Trust newspaper. Federal government records 5.33 trillion naira deficit, uh, miss revenue targets by 34 percent. Oil revenue target dips by 72.9 percent to convert 20 trillion naira CBN loan to 40 year bound or bond. A subsidy hampering revenue growth. Finance minister is quoted on that. These are the riders. Uh, underneath the bold caption and you have brain drain nigerian left with twenty four thousand doctors <laughs> uh to how many population so uh what's the ratio of a doctor to a patient now it could be one is to 500 or one is to 600 or one is to five thousand 
NNPC spent 788 billion naira on salaries, forex entertainment, and others. Uh, Repose in APC as Adamu replaces suspended directors. And just before we move away now from the Daily Trust, second Niger Bridge completed. Abuja Kaduna Road uh, 50%. That's what Fashula is saying. And Buhari signs Nigeria startup bill into law. I will appeal judgment to reaffirm my victory. Uh, Fana Hussein that. Gunmen killed 23 in Benue Village. These are the headlines this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. And the last paper on our table is Daily Sun. The big story there, 2023 campaigns. Military bars politicians from using its images, visuals. Military bars politicians from using its images images visuals um naira will be devalued by 20 percent in 2023 says bank of america 83 percent high debt service threat to revenue next year finance minister ipob charges southeast governor's Igbo leaders to speak for kanu's release or shiba joe in Gigi, other presidential aspirants missing in new apc pcc Buhari to inaugurate a new APC PCC members at Tinubu's policy document tomorrow. 1.9 million Nigerians living with HIV, says US. PVCs for voters registered from June, uh, January rather, to June 2022, ready for collection. Microsoft to train 5 million Nigerians on the, in high demand skills as Buhari signs Nigeria's startup bill into law. Lagos Alaba market shutters, traders clash with Outs. Lagos Alaba market shut as traders clash with touts. Obajana Kogisu's uh, Dangote seeks order restraining company from benefiting uh, incompetent agreement. Uh, details on page, tw page 25 uh, of the Sun. Suspected herders killed two policemen, 16 others in Benue. Uh, headlines on the front page of uh, uh, the Daily Sun uh, this morning. And at this time, we'd like to bring in our guest, uh, Ezekiel Iyaituk, uh, for um, his analysis. Um, Ezekiel Iyaituk, thank you very much for your time. Um, let's look at the presidential campaigns of uh, the leading political parties. Um, and I don't mean to say that Labour Party or even ADC is not leading, but the two leading ones that have held power in the country uh, before. The PDP, as captured on the front page of um, the the punch newspaper with the headline aggrieved nwc members protest exclusion from presidential campaign this is in the pdp crisis and of course we're hearing the president buhari leading the apc presidential campaign with a son saying that uh, oshiba jongiki and other presidential aspirants are missing on that list so please give us your analysis of the two pccs yeah um again thanks for having me and um as unhappy as I am for you to box me into uh, talking about two parties that really are two sides of a coin and the wrong side of the coin uh, makes me a little bit, but this is um, a newspaper review. But so let me uh, bow to your wish, as it were. The first thing is that these people when you hear them fight over wanting to be on the bill is because, you know, the Presidential Campaign Council is where you have a lot of money, a lot of funds to throw around, a lot of, um, you know, jamborees, a lot of, so it's not about um, going to do the work, but, but being part of the chopping spree. And that's become, you know, synonymous with our campaign councils. So you find a lot of people being very unhappy, they are not there. Now, by right, it should be something that people want to be part of because of maybe having in their political CV that they were part of this council or part of that council. That should be a positive thing. But uh, more often than not, it's not about uh, going to do the work, but uh, about going to be part of the largesse that come with them um, campaigns. And it is very sad that campaigns should be jamboree times. I think that INEC really needs to come hard on what campaigns should be like. There should be structures where you have town hall meetings, where you have engagement with the people, and not about all these rallies and all sorts of contracts at a time that we really don't have the money. 
You know, I, I always tell people that you can tell the future from the present because the foundation of the present determines what the future is going to be. A lot of people that are contesting, right from political parties, are saying you must bring a hundred million naira for you to be able to buy a, a, a presidential form, or fifty million naira to be for you to buy a, a governorship form to INET that says uh, governorship you cannot spend more than uh, uh, one billion, or the presidency you cannot spend more than five billion. And I've been issued from the beginning, from the get go. They know that even 50 billion is like child's play for presidency. And when it comes to the governorship where I'm involved with right now, you realize that people are thinking in terms of 30 billion and, you know, humongous amount of money to do what? To get into service or serve a state that is bankrupt. Some things just don't match. They just don't add up as far as I'm concerned. And I think that we need to come back and completely review our understanding of government and the essence of government. Our political processes and our leadership recruitment um, uh, 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 criteria or processes or dynamics in, in arriving at our leaderships. I think that um, the whole thing just makes me feel very, very unhappy, makes me feel very sad and almost depressed that look at, look at our budget. Look at how, how we want to fund our budget. How many people are sitting down to understand that when you get into this seat, how many, how many governorship candidates, how many presidential candidates really understand the situation we are in today and how they intend to manage it? And if that be the case, these monies that you are getting, where are they coming from? And what is the understanding, especially at the state level? There's a lot of political funding going on by what I call the political investors. They see a state and they say this state is viable. They get a candidate, they pump money into the state. And the understanding is for them to have a constant chop of, of the budget of the state. And I think that we, the Nigerians, the office of the citizen, need to wake up and sit up and really ask ourselves hard questions as we go into 2023. So the issue of those campaign councils, for me, it's um, being part of the jamboree and it's a sad commentary. Ezekiel, yes, let's uh, share your thoughts on the Niger Bridge. A lot of Nigerians have been talking about it. I mean, uh, you have the Minister Fashola saying that it's been completed, but some people are reacting differently. Others are saying uh, completion without any link, uh, talking about the link roads to... Uh, Asaba and to other parts, uh, it's a lot of concern for some people. While others have actually queried the standard, some say it's really nasty. I'm just saying in the words of the people now. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Okay, um, as, as a project administrator and as a consultant, there are many technical languages that you must understand to know whether somebody is telling the truth or is telling a lie. Now, Completion, there's what you call practical completion, okay? And then it's a completion stage. And then you now have the total completion. And secondly, there is the project. And there is the, 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 um, the things that add to the project. For instance, if I'm to build a bridge, and I tell you I have built the bridge, I may not be lying to you, but you know that you need to have access to the bridge. But that wasn't my contract. My contract was to build the bridge. I have built the bridge, even if it has no access to anywhere. So, but when you want to be honest, you become holistic. You know that the bridge, there was an essence to that bridge. That bridge was to divert traffic or to ease traffic or to give alternate traffic. So until there is a movement of the traffic, from where it was, through the bridge, to where they are going, and until that bridge is usable, even at practical completion, there are still some works that be going on, but it can actually be used. You know, like if you have a house, at practical completion, maybe you can move into the house while they are still doing the external works because the, the plumbing system is working well, the electrical is working well, but you see the environment 
they still need to clean up the environment. That doesn't stop you from being able to stay in the house while you work in the environment. You know, the landscaping, which should be a vital part of the environment. So I, I need to know whether he's giving us a technical, you know, definition or he's giving us a practical definition. These are two aspects, and he might not be telling a lie if he says that the bridge is completed. Secondly, it is completed to specification. The specification may not be your expectation. These are two different things you need to be able to align. For instance, if my specification says that I'm going to have, you know, to scrape the floor, in which case it's just ordinary cement, then you don't, you don't even have have any form of tiling, not to talk of marble, we don't have anything, you know, that was my specification. So to me, I have been able to deliver to specification. To you, it might be unappealing visually because who lives in a house with a cement screed floor? You need to have, at the very least, a tiling if you don't want to have a terrazzo or you want to have a, a marble or other fancy stuff. At the very least, you need to have a tiling. But if that was not my specification, you cannot say I've not completed. I have completed, but it is not to your test. So when you put all these dynamics into play, you may understand why the, 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 the minister may not be wrong. It is up to us to go and look at what the specifications were, the professionals uh, that we are, and then enlighten the public and say, probably for reason of funds, we couldn't have marble, so they just had tiling. So let's manage that. So for me, he might not be lying. I've not been there. All I know is that the second Niger Bridge would be a blessing. That I know for a fact. So within that context, I will also um, applaud the federal government for completing it. They did not initiate it. But uh, government is a, a relay race. It's a continuum. You know, one person passes the baton to the next. You know, like the Bible says... Um, Paul sold, Apollo's water, God gave the increase. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Let's go over to uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, I think uh, our, one of the things that we are always, always looking out for uh, to, to highlight is the flood situation in the country. It's a very dire one, very sad one. And uh, one of the stories on the front page of the Punch is uh, talking about um, the situation in Ogun State, which has not been... Uh, highlighted as one of the states affected or uh, received as much coverage as um, like so Bayo State, Bayosa State, Kogi State, Kwara State, and even uh, River State uh, or Anambra State. Uh, but Ogun, Ogun State, according to the punch, has 4,885 houses submerged. Of course, 33 out of uh, the 36 states are affected. So we know Ogun is affected. But the punch has given us details of what's going on there. 4,885 uh, houses submerged. But the paper also says that uh, the federal government is absorbing uh, the neighboring republic of uh, Cameroon from all of this. In fact, the paper says that the federal government, through the Minister of Water Resources, uh, Mr. Suleiman Adamu, has said that the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon was not responsible for the flooding that has devastated parts of Nigeria. You know, uh, for me, when I looked at all the news flying around and the pictures and videos, you know, I said, okay, you know, we have this pension for, you know, spreading fake news and people are coming and I could smell it. And I could smell it. Um, so what the federal government has come out to say that this is not true. It's not a lack of damn responsible. Um, do you agree? Are they trying to, to save face uh, with all the narrative of, of all the federal government didn't build their own dam they were meant to build after Cameron built theirs on the river uh, Niger or River Benu, as it were? Um, the issue of the flooding is one issue that... Um, uh, I, I don't know if I can just make a comment or two, uh, but it's, it's pretty fundamental. Fundamental to the end that when you see lives affected, when you see what people are going through, and you read the different commentaries, there's a very clear disconnect between people in government and the essence of them being there in government. I don't want to know why the people have not eaten. I want to know the effort you are making to make sure that if they have not eaten, they will soon eat. I want to know what you are doing to address the situation. Now, I want to commend at this point a man like Mr. Peter Obi that I said, come on, presidential candidate, we are going to be facing this issue 
again very soon because a year comes faster and this comes every year. What can we do even holistically or, you know, uh, corporately to see how we can address this? Can we, can we have a talk on it or something? Because when you see some of the images and, and imagine that that could have been your village, that could have been your relation, that could have been your people, our hearts must go out to them on one hand and the government must be asked to sit and tell us what they want to do. Absolving the Cameroonian government of any complicity or wrongdoing, I don't see how that solves. You put Gary on the food or on the plate of those people that are that are that are homeless. Please tell me what the problem, what your short-term, medium-term, long-term solutions are, and how we are factoring it. We have just sent a budget for next year. What is in the budget that shows? what we want to do against next year. You know, I think it was um, Ch uh, Winston Churchill that says that hope is the anchor that stabilizes the soul. Let these people actually have hope that maybe in the nearest future they'll be able to go back or something. So I'm not really impressed yeah, so by saying, Mr. oh, Mr. it Mr. is Mr. not Mr. their Mr. fault. Yeah, Whose fault is it? Yeah, Mr. Andrew, um, yeah you, you've rightly said, so this is one aspect of, um, of what the, the minister said. And I mean, you're right, you know, but... Uh, uh, one of the things that we're grappling with this in this country would also be information management, which this administration may not have done so well with. And uh, I don't know if we can fault the minister for first pointing out that okay, let's let's address this issue because it uh, it rubs off badly on the government when uh, I mean they, they, we hear that they are not doing their part or they didn't do their part of the of the agreement with Cameroon, and that's why we we're exploded. Uh, misinformation can do some harm, you know. But but just to to address your 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 very very important point on what are you doing what he's saying as part of the story is that um he raised the issue or the punch is saying rather is that he raised the issue of floods in the country during the budget uh, ministry's budget defense is the ministry of water resources the budget defense and uh, what efforts the ministry was making about uh about the the uh, what do you call it the situation so i think uh, that is a uh, uh, covered and he was asked this question he had to he had to reply respond to it so they, they've done that as far as the budget is concerned but like you're saying uh, probably you're trying to say more needs to be done yeah yeah it's <laughs> you know if if you are if you're in government i say it again you need to understand how governance works you know one of the things i found i was being the um, housing i was vice chairman of the national housing update and review committee and and then um, one of the things i saw was that it was said that the cries of the people woke up government woke up that's the word that was used now government applies what they call lines of least resistance so if i was the minister for waterways and things like that long before now what i would have done before going for budget defense was to have a major engagement with the people which you are allowed to do that and let the people make this noise so loud and clear that if something has to be done, you should say what should be done and they say this is going to be done, it's going to come. So it's like an interaction with the people. So by the time you go for budget defense, they would already have heard so much, known so much. And, you know, it's a strategy game. There are people in government, they lack tact and strategy and it bothers me. So him going there as a lone voice, all those people in the panel, they are going to be looking in terms of, um, with all due respect, uh, how, what is going to come in there for them. And those that are not directly affected are going to be uh, complacent. But if they had gotten you know, the, 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 the public behind them, then before you even appear at the budget defense, you realize that they, 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 they would have been aware already. You would be you know, presenting to them what, what, what was the consensus uh, within the public, within the public space. So I think that, well, I thank him for the effort he's made and clearing the air on certain area, but I think that we need to be a little more proactive. And again, it comes down to our governance style. There's so much problems, so much so that 100% of our budget cannot effectively address one segment of our concerns. So the issue is, what sort of governance system and structure, where do we cut the wastages 
Nobody's talking about this. These are the things that should really be concerned. When you see the move, the train, the movement to support Mr. Peter Obi, let Nigerians sit down and think, why this man? It's not about him coming from Igbo land. No. I am one person. You know, I belong to a different party, though my party is having quite some issues right now on the presidential beat. And, um, but I have been a student of Peter Obi over the years. If you go to my Facebook page, Peter Obi governance, what does it mean? A governance system that you have value, you have feelings for the money of the people, where you think in terms of value for money. What we so, so we're able to capture all the issues quickly because we, we don't have time on our side. And let's quickly take a look at, you know, the Daily Trust newspaper. It talks about brain drain and uh, the reports from the Nigerian Medical Association. We're left with 24,000 doctors uh, looking at the statistics from uh, the World Meter Elaboration. Uh, it's the latest data from the United Nations where the uh, current population of Nigeria is at 217 million people plus some fraction. And so uh, health is wealth. That's what they say. What becomes of the health uh, of Nigerians with 24,000 doctors to look after 217 million people plus? Uh -uh. I'll tell you this. Number one is that my wife is a medical doctor, very, very senior and highly resident medical, you know, medical uh, consultant or physician. And number one is that the parents spend a lot of money to send her to school. Number two, she's got a lot of bills to pay. Number three is that she did education as a means of livelihood to a great extent like every other person. So the issue is where do I get value for money and my services appreciated? Nigerians don't think that health care is a priority. As a result, they treat health care, you know, uh, specialists or those that deliver health care with, with levity, with, with no respect to start with. It's not a priority to them. We have more priority on what they call spoil subsidy. This Thing that Mr. President called a scam, as opposed to things like education, healthcare, housing. It, it, it's a lack of so these people go to where they are being welcomed and they are being well remunerated. You can stop them. The least you can do is sit back. So many of them that would have left, many of them, I'll tell you this, are staying back because of their parents. Maybe they are those taking care of their parents and, you know, if I, I'm the one staying with my mother, aged mother, and I can't leave, or one thing or the other. So many other people, it's not about for, for, for lack of um, a better incentive. But if, if, if these other people couldn't care less and leave, we'll be left with a, an abysmal number that we won't want to talk about. Bottom line is this. Let the incoming, let us put pressure on all the presidential candidates and ask them, for their policies on healthcare, on education, on housing, those basics to start with. That's the only way to address these issues holistically. Unless you give the doctors something that makes sense. Some of them are very patriotic, extremely patriotic, but they are not going to die because they are patriots. Yeah. Right. But, but uh, Ezekiel Yaitouk, that sounds very fantastic. Uh, it's okay for us uh, Nigerians to put pressure and ask those who would be taking over office in 2023 what their plans are. But, but if you want to juxtapose it with the entire constitutional process, I mean, the fact that it's still lingering because you have only 11 states who have actually said, uh, given a nod to it, and 25 yet to give a nod to some critical bills. It's a lot of process. I don't think, you know, one person, one man alone can solve the problem, uh, being a president, because you would also have, uh, you know, a, a, a legislative house. And so it's a lot. Let's pray that we get to that point where everything works. Let, let, me, let, me, let me shock you. Let me shock you. Nigerians are about the most understanding set of people I've seen in the whole world. And all they need is a leadership that is sincere and committed. Nigerians are very understanding. This is the time that if we have a president, we must have a president that communicates with the people all the time. We must have a president that has the capacity to communicate with the people all the time. 
any president that is able to communicate with the people and has charisma, the charm to carry Nigerians along, will get away with no other. We'll be able to do a lot of things. And we have a president right now who is, who is absent, effectively. So everybody does what they want to do. If you have a president that comes up and says, guys, this is not okay, we've got to get this done. I want to tell you that the National Assembly, the State of Assembly, the, the governors that come in, let us be careful whom we are going to vote for in 2023. Once you have people with the same hair who come in for service, they will do what is in the interest of the country. They all just be throwing money around. These are entrepreneurs, you know, polytrainers who are just coming to collect money. Once they come in, they will never take an action that will be against their money, you know, grabbing, uh, you know, initiative. See what's going on in NDDC. Unfortunately, we cannot get into it. But I think that I've been close enough to the leadership of NDDC, and I know the pressure put on them from the national, from the presidency, to bring that money to fund the elections. And sometimes I don't know whether to excuse the, the leadership of NDDC because they're just boys and tools, and the pressure is enormous to fund politics. Fund politics. Nigeria is our politics and not about governance. All right, then. Ezekiel Yaitouk, we have to go, but we appreciate you and your time uh, on the program. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. God bless you all. All right, then. Uh, that's so much we can take at this point. And off the press, Ezekiel Yaitouk has been, uh, you know, with us, Kofi, and it's always, uh, you know, great to have him share his thoughts on some national issues. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll take a look at what happened today in history, today being the 20th of October, um, 2020. Two. And when we come back, we start our special coverage of NSAR's protest Licky Massacre two years on. Stay with us.